You know, I've always been an advocate. If you're new to investing, definitely, definitely engage a qualified financial advisor. Why? Because there are so many investment mistakes that will be made by new investors, definitely. Today, I'm going to touch on a couple of them. And towards the end, I'm going to give you a solution how to correct away these mistakes. A typical financial advisor, qualified one, is supposed to guide you in avoiding these mistakes and keep you on track towards your financial goals. You know, it's like Roger Federer. He is you know, such a legend. But it's, in any case, when he goes to competition, when it matters the most, he still engages a coach. Rafa Nadal is the same. The top players always have a coach regardless how good they are. Same with this. This weird logic I've seen before in forums. If you are new to investing DIY, do it yourself. Only when you have deep pockets, then engage financial advisor. That, that is far, far from the truth. Because if you are new to investing in DIY, that's when you commit the mistakes. And in any case, if you are high net worth, which means your investments are big, say 10 million, then the fees are starting to look very big because 10 million, 1% is $100,000 in terms of fees. But uh, weirdly, those people who have 10 million actually pay that 100,000 to get investments managed. So why is someone that's investing $10,000 trying to save from $100? I don't, I don't quite understand that logic. But in any case, investment mistakes can definitely be corrected. I'm going to touch on two key parts of it. And towards the end of the video, I'll show you how to correct them because if you are able to avoid them, and you are able to invest successfully, you can reach your financial goals and that is ultimately what matters. Hi guys, welcome back. I promised you some reasons as to why new investors do not make money. And again, I'll give you solutions at the end, how to correct away those mistakes. Because at the end of the day, we are trying to learn from other people's mistakes. But let's look at this summary over here. This is actually done by Howard Marks. You know, he's such an astute investor. I, I listen to what he has to say because there's nuggets of wisdom. And if we read this paragraph together, investors rarely maintain objective, rational, neutral, and stable positions. They exhibit high levels of optimism, greed, risk tolerance, and credulousness, and their resulting behavior causes asset prices to rise. Did you see what happened to Bitcoin a couple of years ago? If you have, leave a yes below. Bitcoin shot through the roof. It was like the market darling. Everybody was talking about cryptocurrencies taking over the world. What happened to Bitcoin next? It crashed. So again, when things are looking rosy, investors are no longer rational. They are seeing what other people have made. They are seeing the fortunes of what other people have made and they, they think that that can apply to themselves. That is, a, that is a key learning lesson. Jot that down because that's really going to help you become more successful in investing. Let's read on further. For some reason, perhaps a arrival of tipping point, they switch to pessimism, fear, risk aversion, skepticism, and that causes asset prices to fall. Now, we all know about this current pandemic this COVID-19 pandemic. Is this the tipping point? Does this look like a tipping point? No. This pandemic was, was a black swan event. Nobody could have foreseen what, what has happened. But nonetheless, not everybody is so pessimistic. Everybody feels that, you know, stock markets are going to new lows for sure. This could be Great Depression, etc, etc. It's crazy because everybody is stuck at the current moment. They can't see the future. When you, when you want to invest successfully, look at the future. That's, that's a real key point. Jot that down because that's really going to help you. I'd like to show you a subsequent chart actually done by Credit Suisse. This chart, very interesting, captures a lot of what I've been through you know, when I was new to investing. And hopefully, if it helps you in some way or another, it's going to save you a lot of money. Let's look at this over here. As you can see at this part, someone who is new spots a new investment opportunity. And after a while, this opportunity starts to trend up, correct? And eventually, the investor gets invested into it. Then what happens next? There is a correction. There is a tipping point, what how Marx mentioned. And this is very, very interesting. Wow, at this price, I will double my position. This is, friends, this is greed. This is trying to average losses. I've actually a previous video, do not catch falling knife. I'll leave links below. It's a great tutorial. You should actually watch it also subsequent to this video because that's going to help you understand what is catching a falling knife. If you double down blindly your position, you're going to get burned. So what happens next to investor? Let's pull up this chart. Again, Credit Suisse mentioned the story, enough is enough, I should sell and never look at stocks again. Why is investors so pessimistic now? You might be thinking, because everything in terms of the news is negative. He has seen losses. He has regretted his decision. He should is, you know, hope that this mistake will never happen again because losing is not fun. That's, that's how everybody feels. That's the truth of it. And then the investor might think, luckily I sold out everything and the investor doesn't want to get involved in any potential rebound. But what happens next? When everybody gives up, that's where the market rallies. Go and check on this. Most retail investors actually exit the market at the bottom. They don't exit at the top. Weird, correct? 
because most investors should be exiting at top, but that's not the case. Astute investors exit at top. They don't buy. They don't buy that much. But you know, retail new investors, someone that's trying to DIY, that goes into competition without a coach, without thinking through strategies, they, they sell out, they give up at the bottom, and they miss out everything that is recovering. Subsequently, let's move back to the chart again. The investor reinvests somewhere close to the top. This cycle repeats over and over again. I don't want you to make that mistake. That's why we have to really believe investors are irrational. Or, or rather, to, to frame it differently, investors are rational for the moment. Right now, you see this pandemic, you see COVID-19, you are rational. You know that economies will get worse. There's a chance stock market goes lower. You are rational. But when it comes to long term, you may not be rational. That's why investors can't see past the current moment. Investors can't see the daylight at the end of the suffering. That is why right now, Singapore's economy is not going to do well. But long term, do you think it will do well? Conversely, right now, technology is doing so well. If you look at technology, Amazon's shares are even above this start of pandemic. But what, what is happening? New investors are getting involved in your technology. They think technology is going to solve every problem there is in this pandemic and technology companies are not going to suffer at all. That may not be true. Don't jump to that conclusion irrationally. I'd like to show this chart over here. This is actually very interesting. This is the ratio of S&P technology to S&P as a whole. What do you realize? Everybody is piling on into technology. Now, what do you learn from Howard Marks? He mentioned that investors start to trend, start to follow the herd, starts to start to accept risk that is not worthy, and they are starting to lose faith in things that have not looked well in the last couple of months. That is a mistake that you need to avoid. Jot that down because that's certainly going to help you. Now let's move on to the second reason, because this is a totally different reason, a much more common reason, but nonetheless can help you shape your own investment journey. Now have you heard of this saying, time in the market, not timing the market? This has been mentioned to death already, so it's been around for the longest period of time, but common sense is not common practice. Let me show you what Peter Lynch has to say. He's mentioned that the price at which you buy a share is not important. How long you held it is what mattered. Now that is my blowing because Every time you're asking this question, is it a good time to buy this share? That is the exact opposite of what he's mentioning. The price at which you buy is not important. How long you hold it is important. I have further evidence to show you that most, most investors understand time in the market, but when it comes to practice, they actually try to outsmart the market. This is actually done by the balance. Why people lose money in the market? You see over here, they have some findings. The average investor has underperformed the market for 25 years. When S&P drops by 4.38%, the average investor lose twice the amount, 9.42. Investors try to outsmart the markets by frequently doing buying and selling in an attempt to make superior returns. It rarely works. Now, I've actually heard before some investors, even some YouTubers mentioned that at the start of the pandemic, they sold away all their shares. That is crazy. That is trying to predict the markets. That is just understanding that you know, the market situation could be bad, but selling away everything is a clear sign that the investor is emotional. The investor is trying to time the market and make superior returns exiting and trying to hopefully buy in at a lower. That does not happen. That is a certain way to lose. That is trying to be too smart. That is why Warren Buffett has this saying. Warren Buffett mentioned that someone with 130 IQ can beat someone with 160 IQ when it comes to investing because investment is just slow and steady. It's just doing the boring stuff over and over again and being really patient. I have a further chart to show you why Investing for a long period of time is certainly going to help you. Jot that down because when you start investing, write down and make it, make it a point whereby you're going to hold this investment for a long period. Because writing down reinforces that thought. Let's look at this graph over here. This is, this is done by S&P Global Market Intelligence. It shows you that when you invest for 20 years on STI, your odds of losing is zero. Zero. Confirm gain. Now, I don't put the word confirm too, too loosely. But you can see over there, that's stats. That is data. If you invest for a period of 10 years, you can't see 20 years, invest for a period of 10 years, you're almost certain to make a gain. Only 17% of chance you have a loss. And for some reason, most, in, most investors still think 10 years is too long. 10 years is not long at all. Jot that down. If you want to really succeed investing, you have to look long term. You have to invest for a long period of time. In any case, Without a long period of time, there's no chance that your compounding is really going to make a difference to your financial objectives. I have this data I'll show you over here. If, for example, you are looking to invest dollar cost average for, for 10 years, you're trying to put aside monthly amounts to work towards your investment objective. Do you realize in this chart over here, after 10 years, 
the blue bar is what you have in terms of total gains. Now we are projecting with 5% return. The blue bar is what is with returns and the orange bar is capital. You realize that even after 10 years with dollar cost averaging, the difference is so small. What's the point of investing if you are trying to invest for only 2, 3, 4 years? The difference is even smaller. When it comes to investing, 10 years is a minimum. Look longer than that. Plan your investment objectives long term because that's ultimately the real solution which is what I'm going to touch on in the next section. Now in this section, I'm going to show you how to use investment objectives to correct the way investment mistakes that new investors typically make. But before that, smash the like button so that more people can see valuable content like this. And again, if you haven't subscribed, smash the subscribe because we'll be launching videos every week to help you in your financial journey. Now, investment objective is very crucial to investing successfully. Why? Because it gives you guiding posts. It gives you a, a map to how to get invested because you shouldn't be investing blindly. Investment has risk. That's the truth of it. You, if you put your monies in a bank, the chances of it being gone is next to nothing. But when you invest, there'll be periods where you see negative returns. There'll be periods where you see paper losses. So why are you investing must be clearly answered first. So when it comes to investment objective, let me show with a few examples how it actually works. If you are a retiree with a million dollars and your objective is to get $2,000 passive income, then that only works out to be 2.5% in terms of dividend yield that you need from a portfolio. So why, if you have a million dollars and your objective is just $2,000 a month, why do you need to take on excessive risk? There's no reason to do so, correct? So what you should look for is just low risk instruments like high quality bond funds, etc, etc. And do very little in terms of equities because in any case, there's no need to take risk. How much risk you should take should, determine, should be determined by your investment objective itself. So on the other hand, if you have only 500,000 in your retirement pool and you want $2,000 per month in terms of passive income, then that tweaks the equation a bit differently. You need to look for higher return instruments, things that have certain risk, which means they should include REITs, they should include high yield bonds. And your portfolio is going to see ups and downs, which means if you prepare ahead of time, you're ready for the journey. And then that can be easily accomplished because 500,000, if your, your dividend yield is 5%, you can easily derive 2,000 a month in terms of passive income. Now let's fit the equation differently. If you are a parent looking to save up and your investment objective is 50,000 for your child's education, I've actually done before a blog article. I'll leave links below just in case you're keen to find out why 50,000 is sufficient for a kid's education fund. If you are a parent looking to do so and you have 18 years to reach you know, that period of time, that means you actually have a lot of time to get invested in equity markets. And let's say you can target 5% in terms of returns. That means that to reach 50,000 with 5% per month, you only need to put $150. Make sense? Because $150 for 18 years at 5% gets you to 50,638. That means you achieve your investment objective. That means you shouldn't take excessive risk by buying into stocks and stuff, whereby there'll be periods where you, you could lose significant amounts. You should diversify, target that 5%, stay on course with $150, and let the ups and downs ride out itself. And eventually, you reach your investment objective. Now, I've covered a few scenarios. If you are interested in more scenarios or if you need a personalized scenario, look for my links below. I'll do a one-to-one -one coaching with you. And again, if you have comments, leave them in the comment sections. I'll pick up each and every one of them. I hope you found this sharing valuable. Invite friends to this channel. Invite friends to this community. I'll see you in a future video. Take care and goodbye.